Indeed, indeed. This is like a new little world we've got in our hands, and I've come to show you all just a few more steps as to how we're going to continue this. Of course, it was a late night when I did my last video, and of course, there's been a little struggle with all this stuff about, like I say, downloading them from the Amazon cloud to your computer and uploading so that you can upload them from your computer to YouTube. I had to do a special thing on the screen to kind of make it so that my screen would stay on long enough to download from my Firefox because Google Chrome does not allow you to download from Amazon. So that's how that worked out. And whenever the screen goes out, it pauses your download and then it fails. So we took care of that. We got the last video taken care of. It's uploading to YouTube right now as I'm recording this one. But what I just come to say is that I will kind of make mention to you all now that when it comes to the carving of these Santas, there are certain steps that I say I am going to have to do sometime at a time when I'm away from the camera because some of these steps are just ones that are easy to mess up. They might be the kinds of steps where I can't really talk while making them because I just have to really take my time about it. But there's a certain step we're going to go over right now with all of these. Make sure we got them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we got all ten of these Santas here. But I am going to show you all a little something I'm going to do here. I think tonight I'm going to carve along the shoes. Try to carve the area around the shoes so that it kind of makes the tops of the shoes come up to about the pant legs. So that's the kind of step we're going to work on at this moment. Try to take care of that all the best we can. Make sure we get it. Make sure it works. Make sure it comes out right. And everything we do, we're going to make it all come even. Make it all take care. Make it all come to a world that is even better for us and for all we do. We shine our lights on people. We shine our lights on our names and our places. It comes time when we're going to take care of this step. Let the step be done. Let the step be worked in. It's just a little time when we work in our hands and just like this. Because I've pretty much gotten these knives as sharp as they need to be. Got them taken care of. Got them good. And I will say that there's so much that... It's been a discouraging time because there have been so many projects I've wanted to work on and so many things I haven't been able to find that I need to be able to find in order to work on the projects. It's just been a stressful time. It's been hard to keep things organized enough. And sometimes when things get a little more stressful here and there, it gets a little hard to keep them together, and you just start kind of losing them a little bit. So we're taking care of this little matter the best we can, the best way we know how, and all the things we know are good, and all the things we know will last, and taking care of all the things that won't take care of themselves. And then there are the things which... We know according to the Bible that they will take care of themselves. When the Bible says that each day has enough trouble of its own. So he says, you know, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. It's just a little passage we read. 
there in the Gospels and in the Sermon on the Mount, I come to see that there's a little more work that's going to be done on these as time progresses, as time moves on, as time goes further. We're going to brighten a little more of our days and make each other happy every step of the way. Time to see a bright light shine on heaven and earth. We know it's just a good time for us in this world and the time we're all taking care of the good things in life that we have in a time when we see each other in good. It's been a terrible year with this pandemic, but it all comes well. It all comes good. It's been a terrible year with the coronavirus and all. It's been a better year than last year, as this year we've had our vaccines. But it was like it kind of took a while for the vaccines to be made and to be given and to be tested and approved. And it comes a point where, you know, if everybody for their own individual reason isn't always getting the vaccine. Some people get it and some people don't. And if you're somebody like my 92-year-old grandmother... You probably have a doctor who, for whatever reason, doesn't want you to get the vaccine. It's kind of the reason why my 92-year-old grandmother just hasn't been able to get out at all. It's just a hard time for her, and she could use all the visitation she could get. Because it's just a time when her doctor doesn't want her out because of the way the pandemic is. And because of how it's going and because of the fact that with her health problems the vaccine may not be helpful to her so as we move on we learn so much more and I feel it's been a good time for me to really get these videos together and make these videos and do a little show of them because for all this time we're going through these little things we just see a world that's coming in a world that's coming in and we're taking control of what we have and what we need and learning what we do I've been grateful today that I just see the Lord kind of saved me and saved all the patterns I needed because Ever since cleaning up just to kind of get the basement clean last spring, it's been hard to keep up with everything. So much we had to throw away because it was just laying around as junk. It was kind of hard to keep it together. So we kind of got it together, made the best of it we could, make all the good of it we can. And we know that there's always a light that shines for us, makes us see so much better in the future and in, than in the past. Because we know that God is good. God is holy. He has a plan in everything. He has a purpose in everything. We see God and we see the glory of him shining his light for us. Thankfully, we also learn in our lifetime that it's always about good talent it's always about good theme like I was saying in one of my recent previous videos and this little kind of talent is a little bit of an enjoyable thing I've had some artists who I've seen in places even artists so much younger than me who really inspired me to go a little further. Some of them, just some of them, some of them have been educated to teach art. They taught art in schools and later on they became art instructors. Some of them just have the gifts to do that sort of thing. I may not have the gifts to go to college or earn degrees or much less to 
be able to come, become a teacher or an instructor, but there is just so much I learn in life and so much I learn to do. It would be hard for me to really major somewhere because with all the things we see, with all the things we do, there's just not a lot that comes of us. There's not a whole lot that makes us happy and makes us joyful. For I say in my lifetime, you know, some people just see the life. And then in Jesus was life, the light of men. It was all just one of the things where we come to know that there was little traditions over the years. I like how these traditional little Santas can come out. Perhaps there could be a year when I could do a little video where I'd do a little demonstration on carving the cosmic Santa that comes out of that same book. Cosmic Santa may be a, be a little easier to carve, but it's a whole lot harder to paint. Once you come down to it, you know it gets unique enough. It shows itself so much from out of this world. But there comes the time when you just kind of learn to let the little things go, because the little things will mean a lot in the long run if you let them do so. Sometimes in our lives, there's been times when there's been so much to do, so much to go through, so much to say and learn, but we have a little faith in us that makes us all happy, makes us all see a world and see God in person. And we know there comes the day when each of us has to stand before God and stand before Jesus and give account for our sins and our shortcomings. And we know that at the judgment seat of Christ, there comes a time when, like C.S. Lewis said, and before I tell you what C.S. Lewis said, I will tell you that at a church I was going to, there was once a minister who came in there and told us about this. He told us it was a C.S. Lewis saying. That's how I know it because I heard it from this minister. But he always would say over and over again that what C.S. Lewis said is, there's one word we're going to say more than any other word when we get to the judgment seat. It is O-H. Oh, so indeed we know that it's all going to be a language we're going to understand. God's not going to speak in foreign tongues. He's going to speak the language that we ourselves understand. Speaks to us in a way that we can understand. Sometimes, just sometimes. This world can really make its place in us and it can show us who we are and what we need to do and what we need to be. This is a little time and a little faith we carry out to the good in the land. For God is the good God, the gracious God, the righteous King, the ruler over everything. We know in our lives that we'll see the heavens and the earth come new. There's little times when you post things online. There comes the times when of all the things we post, sometimes we never know if we might be quoting from something that's a copyright. Because, you know, it's like, when things have copyright material, sometimes social media and Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff wouldn't allow you to upload it. They try to protect people's claims and all the things we know in this world and things we know and do. We see a lot, we hear a lot, we say a lot, we face a lot, and 
in this life, there is a time when God Almighty is free to us. God Almighty comes and sets us free. We know that is as what he said to Jeremiah was, Do not be afraid of them, for I will always come to your rescue. But of course, we know Jeremiah was a prophet who faced many a persecution when it came to him in prison. And sometimes he had his doubts about God because sometimes he thought God wasn't going to rescue him. But we know of all the persecution he faced as a prophet. We know for one thing that he, most of all, knew who God was and trusted him and served him and indeed is in heaven now. But even though this was before the time that Jesus was born, he talked about having fire shut up in your bones. And that's how he was as a prophet. He was the prophet with fire shut up in his bones. That's just a little way we sing our praises to God because it's just the way we express them. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit moves in us, conquers us, gives us our blessings of all things, that we might need here on the earth. You talk about fire shut up in your bones. I tell you all that's what it feels like. To know the Holy Spirit. And I will say there are sometimes a couple of sins that come with it too. The Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. And in another place it talks about quenching the Holy Spirit. We know that. Neither one is right, so I come by to say that sometimes if we commit a sin, if we, you know, that can be an example of how we grieve the Spirit, but sometimes, just sometimes, if there's something we've been called to say or do and we don't do it, or if we're trying to keep somebody else from doing what they've been called or led of the Spirit to do, that falls under the lines of what we call quenching the Spirit. Sometimes, just sometimes, there are also times when we are just human. Sometimes it's just human nature to be a little afraid of things sometimes. We know Moses was afraid sometimes when there were things God called him to do. Sometimes Moses even made excuses not to do it. We know that in his life, I mean, Moses was a character. He sought God and God healed him. And even when it came time that he spoke to Joshua, which was after Moses' death, he said to him, Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said to him, Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? He says, Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. That's how we are commanded to be commanded each of us to be strong and courageous in all we do. But God is on our side and He is a merciful and mighty King. I remember growing up and hearing so much from GT and the Halo Express. Those were like little trill children's songs I sang and knew in church and listened to them in the car and there was so much theme in them, so much to learn in them, so much about God, and so much about the Lord, so much about Jesus. So many verses that taught us so much to learn from our memory. And we also learned about how Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 
There was so much to say, so much to learn, so much to do. And even in that same little cassette we used to listen to, we were introduced to the verse in Romans 3.23 that says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we were introduced to Romans 6.23, the verse that says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is always said in the Bible that it is appointed to man once to die. And after this life is over, it says the perishable cannot inherit the imperishable. For, you know, to be present with the Lord, we must be absent from the body. so much we say and so much we do in our lives we learn that we walk by faith and not by sight there was so much about faith I had to learn over time so much to learn so much to do I'm here to tell you all something people you will never know everything about God never in all eternity you'll never know him fully You'll never fit him into your own little box. That's why there's a place where we even read in there that in Psalms 1 and 39, David says, Your knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. There are Psalms in the Bible that tell us the good news about God and tell us how to pray and how to know God and so many things that King David wrote to the people and said to the people and, and in all the words in the Bible, especially there's places where David said stuff in the Psalms to help us find our rest in God, to help us understand God better and fully so many years it was like in all the churches that was what people sang was psalms they always took the psalms out of the bible and sang them just like that and then there came the time when isaac watts came around and started to write the hymns that they started to sing in church later these days tradition and people are changing so much that Charges are going from hymns to contemporary. It's changing things a little bit and making things a little different, but it's always one of those things where times just change all the time. There were the years when, when in Isaac Watts' days, they just wanted to sing their songs. They didn't want to have hymns. And Every time we kind of look things up, we see things are going to change over time, but the Word of God stands forever. That's why there's that hymn I grew up in church singing that goes, For the Bible stands, though the hills may tumble, yet it firmly stands, though the mountains crumble. I will plant, plant, plant my feet on its firm foundation, for the Bible stands. In this time, I'm about to finish up with this last set of boots here, but there shall come a time later on when it'll be a little more time to go into the shoes a little bit and try to carve out a little more, make a little better home and place out of this and show a little grace all sufficient to the people, for the people of God said, Amen. It's time we get down to this last little step and close it for the night, which I'm getting pretty close to doing. For we are standing here by our faith in Jesus Christ. 
changing this world, changing forever, changing everything as it's going to be. I think it's getting down to where there's probably going to be a couple more steps I can do on video, but there's going to be other parts to come that, like I said, will have to be done away from the camera so that I can kind of be a little bit more focused on doing them. Take care and have a blessed evening.